In this video, you're gonna learn how to transition between two songs in different keys. Transitions can make or break your worship set, so it's really important that you learn how to do this smoothly. Hey everyone, I'm David from Sunday Sounds, where we create resources to make it fun and easy for you to play worship keys. In today's worship keys tutorial, I'm gonna help you tackle transitions head on. If you're a worship keys player, we're constantly putting out new tutorials and how-to videos to empower and equip you to sound awesome on worship keys. So be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss our future how-to and tutorial videos. Now this is actually the second video in a series on transitions between songs. I'll include a link in the description of this video to the first video in the series. In that video, we talked about how to handle transitions between two songs that happen to be in the same key. And that's probably the easiest kind of transition that there is, but obviously not all songs are in the same key, so we also have to address how to handle transitions between two songs that are in different keys. Now, don't get intimidated. I know that sometimes we start talking about key changes and music theory, and people start to kind of get a glazed over expression and feel like it's over their heads, but there's really simple relationships and correlations that I'm gonna teach you in this video so that you're not gonna be super confused or intimidated the next time you have to transition between two songs. But we are gonna have to put our theory hats on a little bit, so brace yourselves. Let's go there together. To talk about transitions between two songs that are in different keys, we're gonna utilize a resource called the Circle of Fifths. Now the Circle of Fifths in a clockwise direction just has all 12 major and the relative minor keys in a circle of perfect fifths all the way around. So you go from C to G, from G to D, from D to A, and so on all the way around until you reach back to C. And the circle of fifths gives us some really simple visual relationships that help us determine the simplest and most musical way to transition from one key to another. So let's make this concrete. We're gonna dive right in. And in most of the examples in today's video, we're gonna be starting in the key of C, but just know that these principles apply no matter where you're starting on the circle. So just orient yourself off of whatever key you're starting in. So if you're starting in the key of A, then we're just gonna be starting in that position on the circle of fifths. But we're gonna start right up at the top in the key of C. So here's the first relationship that I want you to understand. When you're looking at your original key on the circle of fifths, the chord to the left and to the right is gonna be a really easy, seamless transition. So if we're in the key of C, it's gonna be really easy to transition to the next song if it's in the key of F or if it's in the key of G. So let me demonstrate this for you with a couple hypothetical scenarios. So we're starting off in the key of C, end on the one, which is C. Now F is right next door, so we're just gonna go to the new song in the key of F. So because the F chord is in the key of C as well, it's a really natural, smooth transition from the key of C to the key of F. So you don't really have to do anything fancy music theory-wise at all. You can just end on the one chord, C, and then start the next song in the key of F. Or if you'd like, you can end your first song on an F chord and then go right into the next song. And this is pretty much the exact same when we're going clockwise on the circle of fifths. So when we're going from a song in C to the next song in G. So again, there's no fancy modulation or theory required. Just know that that relationship works naturally and you don't need to put in a lot of extra work or transitional chords to make that transition seamless. Again, you could end the first song on the G chord if you'd like and then go straight into the next 
but it also works really well to just resolve to the C chord or the one in whatever key that you're in, and then just move one notch to the right on the circle of fifths, and you'll be right in to the next song. So those relationships between the chords right next to each other on the circle of fifths are the easiest, most natural, smooth transitions from one key to the next. So if you're the one that puts together your set list at church, you can leverage those key relationships strategically to put together set lists that flow together with really smooth, seamless transitions. But obviously those aren't the only transitions and key relationships that you're gonna run into as you're putting together your set list. So the next relationship we're gonna talk about is how to move two notches clockwise or counterclockwise on the circle of fifths. So if we were going clockwise, that would be from C, then we're skipping over G and we're going to D. So that's actually a whole step up. Or if we were going counterclockwise, that would be C to F, skipping over F and then ending up at B flat. So a whole step down. So there's a couple of ways that you can approach this relationship and making this transition seamless. Don't get super intimidated. There's a little bit more thinking involved here than uh, just one step either direction, but it's still a really musical transition. So let me start off by showing you the first way that you can approach this. So we're gonna be in C again for this example, but just know that you can orient yourself wherever you want on the circle and the rules are gonna be the same. So we're gonna be in C and then we're going down past F we're ending up in a new key of B flat. So we can end this on the one and then just let this hang for a little bit. And as you swell, you wanna introduce this F note. And the reason we're doing this, I'll stop here so you can hear this really directly, is because the one chord C has no notes in common with the song that we're transitioning to, which is B flat. So, and it's that lack of shared common tones that can make this transition a little bit awkward or jarring. So what we're gonna do is just simply hint towards the key that we're transitioning to. And especially if this is a slow song, you have a little bed, bed of ambience underneath everything, you can do this really easily by just inserting a suspended C chord. So taking the three E and suspending it up to F as you hang on the end of the song. So we might end right here. And then we can let that F sort of build up and swell. And then we're right here in B flat. So this is a pretty subtle, simple way to transition. And people are gonna feel that shift down, uh, but that's not a bad thing because that uh, has an air of resolution of something new. Um, it's a really pleasing transition as long as it's not completely out of the blue. And I think it's that suspended C chord that makes a big difference in hinting at where you're going so that when you get there, people aren't like, whoa, I didn't see this coming. So let me play this transition without any hinting at all at the new key so you can hear the difference. So we're ending on C. So it's not a terrible transition, but it's a very concrete and direct transition. It has very much a feeling of, okay, we're playing in this key now, here we go versus ending it's still nice and concrete it happens as soon as it happens it's not as smooth as a uh, one step on the circle of fifths but if you can hint towards the key that you're ending up in or moving towards then that can go a really long way so that's the first relationship and that's going counterclockwise. So we're going from C to B flat or a whole step down now. It's basically the same when we're going a whole step up. So we're going from C to D, but the chord that you're gonna to wanna to play when you're moving clockwise is a little bit different. Instead of playing a suspended chord, you might try playing a two chord as the final chord of the first song. Let me demonstrate what that sounds like. So 
So I've got D, G, and D in the right hand. So the two and then the nine up top. And now we're in D. So again, it's a nice resolute transition to the next key, but because you're hinting at one note from the new scale, it still feels like something that people were able to anticipate or at least feel coming. So this is a really subtle way to make that whole step transition up or down uh, to the next song. Let me give you a little bit more of a subtle way to do this now that involves a transition chord. And this is why the circle of fifths can be so helpful because we're walking from the original key, so we're in C, and then we can walk to that whole step and the chord in between the new key is going to be our transition chord. So if we're going counterclockwise, we're gonna go from C to an F and then land in the new key of B flat. Or if we're going clockwise, we're gonna go from C to G and then walk to the new key of D. So let's start by going from C to B flat. So I'm gonna end the song on C. I'm gonna play F as a transitional chord and then we're gonna land on the new home of B flat. So we can sort of hang on this C for a second and then introduce the F. And this works so well because F is in the new key of B flat and there's an F chord in the old key of C. So it feels like a really basic, uh, familiar stepping stone from the first song into the next one. Now we're gonna go up from C to the key of D and it's the exact same. So we're gonna step between on the circle of fifths to that G chord and then land on the new key of D. So this transition takes a little bit longer than just hinting at the new key, but it does make for a little bit less of a dramatic transition. And if you have the time or space in your set list to add in this transitional chord, it can be a really nice way to sort of take people from the first song and move them gently into the next one. So these two relationships, one and two steps clockwise or counterclockwise, on the circle of fifths are the most natural and seamless key transitions that you can make. So again, if you're the one who plans your set lists, you can strategically leverage these really simple transitions and walk your band through how to make them so that your set list is uninterrupted and has a really, really good flow. Now, there's all sorts of other keys on the circle of fifths and we can transition to any of them, but as we move further and further clockwise or counterclockwise, the key transitions get a little bit more complex and take a little bit more time to move towards. So we're gonna end this video right here and we're gonna do one more video in this series where we tackle how to handle these more complex key transitions like a half step transition from the key of C to the key of D flat. So make sure that you subscribe and hit the notification bell and leave your questions and let us know what keys you need help transitioning from so that we can make sure to address them in the next video. Again, if you didn't see the first video in this series on transitioning between two songs in the same key, there's a link in the description. Hope this video was helpful to you. If it was, leave a comment and let us know, and we'll see you in the next one.